What's the significance of entitlement servers for telcos? Well, joining me to shed some light on the topic is Nacho Blasquez, Chief Solutions Architect for Digital Identity at HPE. Nacho, thanks for being with us okay, today. Don't go. So, what is an entitlement server and why is it important for telcos to consider having one? Yeah, so let me, let me show you one slide when I will explain that entitlement server is becoming more and more important for carriers because it is becoming to be the single entry point for every single device, okay? Whenever the device needs something from the carrier, they will contact directly to the entertainment server. It is the entry point to the net. So, as you can see here, there are many use cases that we are implementing for device. Right now, here you, are, you have the most important one, or maybe the, the ones that are more interesting for, for the carriers. It is the easing transfer that we will talk later because this is the demo that we have, okay? But the next step will be, okay, we need to move to the consumer. How we are going to onboard new devices that only has eSIMs in a new subscribe, okay? So this is something that we will put focus for the trans onboarding new subscribes. And also for the enterprise, because they will have a board, okay? No, no more plastic. It, it will be something that they will need to put into the device in an automatic mode, okay? They will use an entertainment server in order to make it easy. This is for customer experience. We have customer experience, so it's not going to add money to the to the carriers, but there is a, another way to monetize this entitlement. Why? We have what we call data boost asset. Okay, remember, you come here to the mobile product, but you want to have an, a specific boost, okay? To have a high reality, okay? Good quality on, on your device. So you will be able to act on real time, okay, that you won't enhance that quality. This is something that you are going to pay for that because you want to have this. And finally, we have this you open gateway model that you, no. you see here in Mobile World Congress, that there is what operators call operator token in order to authenticate seamless, okay, those third are party apps, okay? This is the next few though, but it is not in two years. It is almost right now. Now you mentioned the eSIM transfer. Can you show us a demo of how yes, that works? sure, 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 I will do that. Okay, so for this in transfer, there are many ways to do this. Okay, we have devices, okay, uh, all devices. This is not an old device, but it is the source device, okay, the one who has only physical SIM in this case. Okay, it could be also IC. And we want to transfer to the new device. This device only has a SIM. We are going to transfer the device. We are implementing something that is supported for Apple. Apple support this use case, TS43, okay. And this is something to make simple in just one thing. There is no way and no need to go to the customer service to call for a QR code, anything. Okay. It is just one. So let me show what we have right now. Okay, this is Mobile World Congress. This is where we have two devices. This is our entitlement server piece. Okay, we are authenticated seamless. Okay, without no user uh, interaction with our AAA, and we also get the profile from the SNDP Plus. Okay, but it is much better to see how it works. I will show you every single step, okay, for this process, okay, where the entertainment server is involved and there are some also, those who are in dotted lines that are specific for device. In this case, we have two Pixel devices, Pixel 8, Pixel 8 Pro, okay, that are talking to each other in order to communicate by proxy, okay? So let me open this one, the screens of the devices, okay, the old device, the one having the SIM. I want to transfer to this one. So let me open, okay, I will go to settings, okay? We'll go to the SIMs and I can do different things. I can download a new SIM if it is already prepared in the network or I can transfer. This is what I, I want to do, okay? I will transfer the device, okay? Here we have our telco, this is uh, the demo one and we are going to transfer for Pixel or Android. Okay, in the future, it will be possible to transfer to another type yeah. of devices. Okay? Automatically, I will get the pop-up. I need to scan the QR code. This is not from the carrier. This is from the device in order to pay. Okay? So this is not fake. Okay. You can see here. I will scan and I will continue to the device. Okay? Now, I want to transfer and I will trigger from the new device. This is why I have transferred a temporary token. It's important. Okay? I will convert. In order to make it secure, I have to type my PIN, which is security, it's done. And as soon as we receive the eSIM in this device, I will receive a notification. Okay, so it is transferring. 
It's a couple of seconds. Now, okay. is this the flow that you have to use or can carriers customize this flow? Yeah, this is an example that Carriers TS43 defines different ways to do that. Okay, so it is the customer, you have here the notification, the one who decides which one to implement, okay? You can use this one click transfer, you can use web sheets in order to have some interaction with the user if they need to accept some terminal conditions. You can reuse the profile if in the case that you move from eSIM to eSIM, okay? There are many, so this is something that we can discuss. It is already transferred, so we will to set things, we will see our eSIM lab, okay? And we are in the final step, we just need to activate it, okay? So now you will see that the network is coming here, okay? And that's all, it's simple, one click. So how does HPE provide the entitlement servers? Oh, let me, let me show you because, yeah, additional to this, we have, okay, different ways to provide the entitlement server. There are two main uh, ways. One is an as a service. We are deploying uh, this demo is in the, in the public cloud, and we can also deploy on premises. When we deploy on premises, we can deploy in bare metal, standard one, virtualized, virtual machines, or we can go to containers, cloud okay. native. So you can decide whatever you want, whatever your preference, in order to deploy in the demo server. We are very, very flexible. Excellent. Nacho, thank you very much for the demo.